Director of Operations for Signpost, and this is Phil Rainey, our Head of uh, Community Partnerships and Innovation, and we're absolutely delighted that you've joined us for this special day today. Thank you, and um, a big welcome from me. It's so brilliant to see you all here today. I can't believe how many people have come. Absolutely fantastic that you're all here to share this very special day with us. I need my glasses, sorry everybody. So I would um, like to invite the Bishop of Bedford, the Right Reverend Richard Atkinson, to the stage. So just a moment, I'm going to start us with a blessing on the work of Signpost, but it would be remiss for me not just to say congratulations before I say our prayer, that uh, original local discernment of need being recognised in 34 years of serving the homeless in Luton and Central Bedfordshire. As I thought about that work, um, the passage in the New Testament, in St Matthew's Gospel, of the sheep and the goats came to mind and you may or may not remember these verses but then the righteous will answer him Lord when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you when did we see you ill or in prison and go and visit you and the king will reply truly I tell you Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. It seems to me it's that spirit of service to those in need that we celebrate today. So a prayer of blessing on the work of Signpost. Let us pray. Loving God, who calls each of us to love our neighbour, we give thanks for the work of Signposts over the past years in providing for those who are homeless and in need. May the signpost values of respect, togetherness, happiness, innovation and inspiration continue to guide all that they do and challenge each of us in our love for all. Bless this day and the work of signposts on this day of celebration, its staff, residents and all with whom it partners, that it may continue to enable all to achieve their potential and receive that fullness of life that is your gift to us. In the name of God, creator, sustainer and redeemer. Amen. Thank you very much, Bishop Richard. I would now like to invite Tim, our Director of Operations, who's going to talk to you about Signpost as an organisation. Morning again. So, um, before coming here today, I was discussing my talk with my wife, and um, she said quite clearly to me, don't try to be too charming, don't try to be too witty, and most importantly, don't try to be too intellectual. Just be yourself. <laughs> so thank you all once again for joining us for what is a landmark day for Signposts and helping us to celebrate the work all our volunteers do to make Luton the awesome place it is to live, to work and, and, and to visit. Now, in 1985, a group of people came together to try and find a solution to the homelessness crisis that was, had fallen Luton and Cypost was born. This group then went on to become some of our most consistent and um, trusted volunteers, our board of trustees. And it's important that we recognise today the fact that our trustees give their time and experience so freely to support Kevin, Phil, Leanne and myself and the whole Cypost family so freely. So thank you. Carol, Les, Cherry, Anne, David, Derek, Chris, and not forgetting, of course, those who are either no longer on the board or no longer with us. So, as I mentioned, in 1985, Signpost opened with one hostel 
and 16 beds. And over the past 34 years, we have tried consistently to progress and develop to try and meet the needs of the population of Luton who are suffering from homelessness. This has led to us now having 13 buildings and 137 beds. Now the great, the great Mahatma Gandhi once said that the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And this is what underpins our model of support at Cypos. We fundamentally believe in the absolute potential that each and every one of us can recognise. And that for people to move on through tough times to reach this potential, they need to recognise and develop their strengths. Now, this is often referred to nowadays as an asset-based approach, a strength-based approach. However, we simply like to just look at each individual's strengths and help them to develop those. Now, it's with these Merck values in mind that Team SP was created. And Phil will give us a, 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 a more detailed history of Team SP later on. Although today we are celebrating in St George's Square in Luton, it's also important that we recognise that since 19, 1997 we have been supporting the young people of central Bedfordshire in Dunstable and Houghton Regis. And later you'll see one of these young people, who is now our first signpost apprentice, perform a bespoke drama which has been written by the Next Generation Youth Theatre, NGYT. Now, challenging the stigma and perceptions that surround homelessness has been a long-held objective within signposts and underpins all that we do. So since 1985 there have been many opportunities for us to do this and just a few of the innovations signposts have introduced include a pioneering service that has always and continues to follow some of the housing first principles of providing a tenancy for life with open-ended support to people with severe and enduring mental ill health. This service was opened by signposts, Luton Council, mental health services and all work housing, so a true partnership and supports five people in their own self-contained flats. Five years ago we opened our first SOS shelter on Dallow Road. Then three years ago this shelter moved to a a more fit for purpose building in James Court, Arthur Street. And today we are waiting, hopefully, to receive planning permission for what will be a third uh, move to Guildford Hall, which is a 45 bed unit behind the library behind us and in the town centre, and which we believe will be a game changer in the fight against rough sleeping in Luton. Guildford Hall will also provide a base for our hugely successful street outreach team. On their stall over here, there today, you can please go over and speak to them about the inspiring work they do to support people off the street and into accommodation and support. In the past 12 months, Cypos and the rest of the Rough Sleeper initiative in Luton have helped to significantly reduce the levels of rough sleeping in our town. And this has been achieved by working in close partnership with the Ministry of Housing, Community and Local Government, Luton Council, East London, East London Foundation Trust, Resolutions and of course our friends at Noah Enterprise. None of these innovations and services would have been possible without the hard work and dedication of not only our staff teams, our trustees, but also our volunteers and most notably, Team SP. I hope you enjoy the programme we've brought together for today. And I would now like to invite Meryl Dolling, our Sheriff of Bedfordshire, to the stage. I hope you can hear me. It's a bit high. Lord Lieutenant, ladies and gentlemen, honoured guests. Good morning. As High Sheriff of Bedfordshire, it's an enormous pleasure to be part of today's celebrations with signposts. 
who are truly worthy recipients of the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. The High Sheriffs of Bedfordshire have had a long and close relationship with signposts since 1985, when they first opened. In his year of office, Daniel Hanbury visited the signpost team on their very first job in Grove Road in 2010. And Jack Sapsworth, a much loved former High Sheriff from Luton, was particularly supportive during his year in office in 2012. And I'm delighted to say that I've spotted a number of former High Sheriffs actually in the audience as well. Welcome to the Countess of Errol, who was High Sheriff in 2015-2016, Cynthia Gresham, Vinod Taylor, uh, Judith Howard. And I apologise if I haven't spotted everybody. I personally have known Phil Rainey, who's Head of Community Partnerships and Innovation for a number of years. And I've seen her infectious enthusiasm and motivational skills working with volunteers at a range of civic events, undertaking particularly car parking and marshalling duties. And as a councillor for Stutsley Ward, my husband worked with her team on litter picking cleanups in the area. We've also seen signpost volunteers working in the kitchen at Stopsley Baptist Church, as well as popping up at events such as the Big Dig in Farley, the Mayor's events in Houghton Regis, and most recently in the People Power Passion Plays in Luton Town Centre here. I've also been very aware of the wonderful job signpost has done to help homeless people not only to find accommodation, but also to support them to overcome the issues that were affecting them and to move on and develop their potential. I'm also looking forward to visiting Signpost Office in the near future and working with them in my year of office. But for today, huge congratulations to all involved in Signposts and carry on the good work. Thank you very much. And we'd like to wish you a wonderful year for your High Sheriff year, Meryl. I would now like to invite Chantry School to the stage. So if you'd like to come up, Mr. Kelly and the children. Now, Chantry's Primary Academy and their awesome Deputy Head teacher, Mr. Kelly, a big thank you because you're the first school that we've worked with at the Love Luton Half Marathon, the Great British Spring Clean. These young people always support all the large community events and they're there cheering loud when the runners cross the finish line at the Half Marathon. They also came in as part of the nomination process when we were uh, applying, when we were um, nominated for this Queen's Award and there was a step when the Deputy Lord Lieutenant came and um, invited us to answer some questions and Mr Kelly and the children kindly came in. They are now going to uh, perform a poem about volunteering. We don't do it for money, we don't do it for fame, we don't do it to get any personal gain. We don't do it to lend a helping hand, together with our community we stand. When we volunteer, we feel good about our A feeling that you cannot buy with money or with wealth. It's not for the medal, it's not for the pride. It's for the feeling we get deep inside. It's the reward we get deep down in our heart. It's the feeling that, you're, that you've been a part of helping others far and near.
So thank you, Mr. Kelly and, and the children of um, Chantry Primary Academy for your wonderful poem. And you're always an inspiration for us at Signpost, and we look forward to volunteering with you in the future. Thank you very much. So I would li now like to introduce our play, My Kingdom, My Castle. My Kingdom, My Castle was written by David Lloyd of NGYT and is directed by Laura Lloyd of NGYT. David used the stories written by people that have lived at Signposts and we hope you enjoy it. Kingdom, no homecoming cuddle. Yet here I discovered my own special place. Beyond the past that I remember and the past that we face, I came to discover a place I could just be. Signposted so brightly was a place to be me. Where I was seen as more than I am. Where belief was restored and that feeling I can. Feeling I'm someone of value. Success. Worth more than before, when we felt so much less. So I ask you, I beg you, look past what you see. From the outside it's easy to think that you know me. When I'm homeless, I'm oh, homeless. Had you guessed? Did you know? Did you think I'd be begging with nowhere to go? Did you think I'd be nowhere, unable to dream? Did you think I was no one? We're, We're more than, than we, we see. see. He's more than he seems. My mate's mum was proper sweet, to be honest. She let me crash on the sofa every so often. <laughs> I wouldn't sleep that well, though, because they had these um, zebra finches in the lounge and they were always making noise. That, and I found it awkward waking up seeing her get into her dressing gown and slippers. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't being ungrateful, I just... Uh, I didn't want to overstay my welcome. She even bought me my own towel. <laughs> I had some other mates to stay that too, but... That never really went as well. I never felt like I could relax. Felt like I was always getting in the way. Do you know what I mean? One of my mate's dads would only ever come into the room when I went out. Turns out I was sat in his chair. I wish he'd have just said something, but he didn't. And I get that a lot. People not saying anything, but looking. Just wanted to know, when does that start to get easier? When does that start? I live in the before, the bit before I find my beginning, my place, where I'll instantly know that feeling. You all know it. You all know the feeling of knowing that you are safe and that no one can take it away from you and that it will last. I guess you call it home. But for me, it was when I found signposts. And 18 months down the line, I'm going to Event meetings with event organisers. Check me out. <laughs> Been put forward for numerous awards. Who'd have thought it? Me. Community Volunteer of the Year and Luton's Most Outstanding Citizen 2017. They believed in me. They saw something in me and they made me see it too. My skills. Yeah, skills. My teachers will be choking on their coffees right now. <laughs> but the best bit is seeing people proud of me for being me and... It was signposts that gave me the confidence to start looking at the future. I have skills, I can cook, I can clean, and I love gardening. My nan had green fingers and I guess that rubbed off on me. 
bit like her taste in music. What was it? Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree If you still want me, if you still love me <laughs> That was her favourite. And I'm lucky from what I learnt from her and for what I know now. In some ways I didn't need support from signposts, but it was nice to be encouraged to get up in the mornings and find something to do, some structure. I enjoyed it. One day I was on the bus and we went past this overgrown graveyard and I thought, we can do something here. We can make a difference. I approached Phil, we went and had a look. We talked to the vicar. We even blagged some equipment for free. Within 10 days, we had reclaimed the ground from waist high grass. And I was proud of what we did. Even if I didn't think it was possible, but we were in the local radio. We were even in the newspaper. What can I say, Dave? Famous at last. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just really proud of everything we've been able to achieve. Even when I didn't think it was always going to be possible. But possibility was now reality. Our potential finally seen. From lost, alone, nowhere to call home. To achievements beyond our dreams. Who I am is important. Where, Where I live is, is not. not. What we have, all that we can give. Celebrating all we've got. It was hard, because I guess it took me time to go from thinking how most people see me as a homeless person, to how I want it to be seen, just as a person. Does that make sense? Well, here I get that. I was seen as me and felt safe, not judged. I started getting involved with the team at Signpost and I remember litter picking at the River Lee. And who'd have thought cleaning was so good? Rewarding even. <laughs> it gave me pride. Yeah, I was proud. And from then on in, whatever was going on, I wanted to jump on it and even get involved. So I went and absolutely loved it. Everyone was so welcoming and friendly. I wanted to give back something and it gave me an opportunity to volunteer with Team SP. I was apprehensive at first, but I went. Meetings on a Friday. They built me up, they fixed me, I fixed me. And I loved doing the jobs, working as part of a team. I remember taking part in Clean for the Queen. Little old me, Clean for the Queen. <laughs> How good does that sound? Proper posh. <laughs> Look at us now. <laughs> and I just love giving back to the community and feeling like I was part of something, part of somewhere. Part of our town. Yeah, that was the best bit. The getting together with everyone, it felt like a family where no one was judging you. I mean, we'd cook together and eat and get to know one another as people. It was weird just sitting and talking to people, knowing that they'd been there too. Like different stories, but somehow they brought us all to the same place. We'd often sit and talk about what we would do next with Team SP, and it was always forwards, never back. I like that. What we could do and achieve. Sorry, what we will do. I can't forget what happened at home with my mum and dad, but that isn't going to define me. I'm not a statistic, I'm a somebody. No postcode, but I'm so much more than that. We all are. Two years on and now I have a beautiful little boy and, and my focus is now on my family, looking after them and myself. I'd never have dreamed that I'd be thinking about life insurance, Ofsted reports, trying to buy a house and maybe even getting married one day. <laughs> he doesn't know that yet. <laughs> <laughs> no one would believe that this is my life now, but it is, and... We are not a perception, or a pastime of pain. We're not a statistic, a number, no name. We are the greatest accomplishments, the furthest of paths, the finest of stories that turn through the dark. We've written new chapters, we've discovered the stars. Judging books by their covers won't lead you to ours. Because here, right now, the stories we've told... Found a home. Found my castle. Found my kingdom of gold. <laughs>
and of course Dave's Luton's most outstanding citizen 2017. I'd also like to say a special thank you to David Lloyd for writing such an authentic piece um, <clears throat> that, was, that truly captured the stories of people who, who lived within Cyphos and also um, Laura Lloyd who choreographed and directed the performance which was absolutely awesome so let's give them another round of applause It now gives me great pleasure to introduce a person that holds a, a special place in my personal journey and is an absolute inspiration to us all at Signposts, Phil Rainey. <laughs> Phil will tell us a bit more about the journey of Tim Westbrook. Thank you, thank you Tim. Now I'm going to read because for those of you that know me I waffle and I use 20 words when one will do so I'm going to read. I would like to start by thanking each and every one of you who has joined us today. It is my immense privilege to be here and talking to you about the journey of Team SP. This journey began in 2010 when I met with Kevin Porter to pitch an idea to him. The vision was to start a volunteer team that would contribute to the community, challenge the stereotype of how people who are homeless are seen, and luckily for me, he gave me a job. I started work in our, in our hostels in Signpost 1 in Dunstable Road and spent time getting to know the people living there. We had our first meeting and we talked about what kind of volunteering we might do and what we might call ourselves. There was a bit of a theme in the room. People kind of felt like this might be a way of giving something back, making up for things they had done. And I really wanted to challenge this narrative. I suggested to the group that we could aim to build a great reputation have a can-do attitude and use the many skills that we all have and that if we were successful we would have a waiting list for our time in years to come and we would be an equal part of our community. So we had a competition to choose the name and got people to put their suggestions forward and in true Team SP fashion we all did it together and we voted and chose the name Team SP. All the decisions over those many years are made like that. People that live and work at Signposts, volunteer together, we organise everything. The logistics, the planning, we do it together. So we had a name and now we needed a job. And I just noticed my sister-in-law Eileen, put your hands up, and Andy in the back there. So they were at Grove Road Church and um, they'd had a flood and they were unable to get anyone to agree to paint it. So they said, well, do you want to come and paint the church? I went around signpost one and I kind of said, has anyone got any painting and decorating experience? And yeah, there was a guy there, Robert, painter and decorator. So we went along, had a look, and he told us what to do. And within three days, we painted, we cleaned the carpets, and it looked amazing. So Team SP began. In the first few years, we tried a few things to see what we were good at. Uh, Mark West, formerly of the Bedfordshire and Luton Community Foundation, asked us if we could help them move their offices. So we got our minibus and trailer, and at this stage found that our forte was never really going to be for moving furniture. As we went round the corner in the minibus with the trailer, and all the, door all the drawers came open on the filing cabinets, and we're like, oh, didn't think of that. Stop the minibus, turn them round, and did complete the furniture move safely. We discovered how much fun it was volunteering in green spaces, working alongside partners at the Green Sand Trust and others, chopping down trees, clearing pathways, clearing ponds. We began litter picking, and we are proud now to have led large and small teams who have cleared thousands of bags of litter from our towns. 
I'd like to say a big thank you to Dave Cream. Wherever you are, Dave, I know you're here. Dave gave us our first job marshalling at the Marsh Farm Fireworks and later the next year at the Marsh Farm Festival. Volunteering at festivals is a really fun and we now feel really privileged to be a part of so many of the wonderful events that happen in our community. From the High Town Festival, Z Mella, the amazing People Power Passion, and being there the day Luton Town Football Club brought that trophy through, we're a part of that. Just awesome, hearing our volunteers telling the Friday meeting, one lady in particular, saw the big banner for the Love Luton Half Marathon and she said, we're, we're a part of that, our town. Fantastic. So partnership has become integral to Team SP and partnerships nowadays include schools, businesses, faith groups, community groups, local authorities, members of the public and more. And it is with these partnerships we now lead and organise annual events such as the Great British Spring Clean, which this year saw 250 people come together. And this October, we will organise and coordinate the volunteer marshal team for the Great Love Luton Half Marathon. In closing, I would like to thank our incredible Team SP volunteers, past and present over the many years, who have generously given their time, their skill, their energy for the benefit of our community. I'm not going to list them all by name, there are so many and I'd hate to forget someone. So I hope you all agree that we have and will continue to challenge the stereotype around homelessness. People who despite having no permanent postcode are people, people that are talented and generous. And to finish, we're just going to show a short video which captures some of the fun that we have while
So as you see, litter picking, marshalling and working in green spaces is a lot of fun. I would now like to invite Robin Porter, CEO of Luton Council, to the stage to say a few words. Thank you, Robin. Don't want to get more music. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Isn't this an absolutely fantastic day? And uh, well done, Phil, for, for booking the weather as well. Um, so for those in the audience that don't know me, uh, I'm Robin Porter. I'm the, the new Chief Executive for the Council. Uh, privilege uh, and very humbling uh, to be here today uh, to talk to you all and just to say a few words. Um, so first, to start off with my huge congratulations to signposts. Uh, the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service is the highest voluntary and community sector award that is possible. An absolute accolade for the charity. Signposts have been serving our community uh, for nearly 30 years. Uh, Kevin, 30 years ago, was close to retirement. Um, and uh, I'm informed he still is. 